Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you an American psychological horror film, Bloodline. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a cruel killing scene. The lady named Nurse just knocks off from her duty. While taking a shower, she is cut right into the throat and dies miserably. The murder swiftly tidies up the mess, and then it throws back to what happened three months earlier. Evan is a social worker at a high school. His daily duty is to counsel troubled students with different issues. Most of them suffer from domestic violence, bullying, and even sexual assault. Evan's wife, as is called wife for convenience, is about to give birth. The couple has mixed feelings towards the incoming baby. On the one hand, they are excited for the upcoming family member. On the other hand, they are anxious about their new roles and the changes, which will take place in their lives. Evan informs wife that his mother's short-named mom will come to see the baby. Worried, wife does not utter a word. Soon after, wife gives birth to a baby boy. Evan, who has witnessed the delivery, becomes very tensed. Obviously, he is not joyful. In fact, he is thrown back to the trauma of his childhood. Mom visits her newborn grandchild named Baby when nurse is guiding wife to do breastfeeding. Nurse rubs the baby's head roughly. Mom reminds her to be more gentle. Nurse glares at mom and warns her not to interfere. Mom gets unhappy and grumbles after nurse leaves. Evan is not adapted to the role of father. At late night, he says to Baby that he will not harm him or look down on him. He promises Baby that he will not desert him and will protect him against troubles. Evan knows that his promise is made to amend his wounded childhood. But soon, the couple is frustrated by babysitting. Breastfeeding proves difficult, and Baby cries throughout the night. Wife almost becomes depressed, and Evan feels helpless. Mom offers to take care of Baby and teaches Evan to be considerate of wife. She emphasizes that Evan should pull himself out of the painful memories. Mom strokes on Evan's back, assuring him that everything will go well since mom is dear. At work, more and more problematic teens consult Evan. Their experiences remind Evan of his past, leaving him more stressed and tensed up. Gradually, Evan finds it hard to focus during the counseling. He cannot help but recall how his late father bit him down, and mom forced his father away with a knife. Back home, he cannot fall asleep. Later, Evan will leave his house after White falls asleep. He takes up his own bag and drives away from the house aimlessly. Before dawn, he would return to wife. When asked when he goes every night, he simply tells wife he goes out with his friends. Wife is rather upset that she cannot handle baby care well, and she is paranoid that Evan will take baby away from her. Coming from a broken family, wife cannot bear to have her own child going through the same sufferings. Evan hugs her, saying that he will not abandon them, but love them with all his heart. One night, wife wakes up to find baby having a fever, but Evan is not around. She takes baby to the hospital and calls Evan on the way. Evan soon arrives at the hospital. Wife demands him to give a proper explanation about his absence, but Evan just tells her he goes out for some fresh air. Fortunately, baby just has a normal fever and nothing serious. Soon after, the family leaves the hospital. Wife is about to get on Evan's car. Evan spots a piece of plastic sticking out from the trunk and gets stressed. Mom tactfully blocks wife's view and makes sure she boards the car without noticing the plastic. Evan's pressure is growing. One day he says to Baby that though he tries to create a happy family, it is too difficult. Another night, Evan receives a call from Chris, one of the students. Chris shares that his missing father has come home and beats him up without any reason. Evan pats him and guarantees him that it is not his fault and it will be okay from now onwards. That night, Evan sneaks out of his house and vanishes in the dark. When he returns, he stares blankly at his sleeping baby. Mom walks to touch his cheek and says she is happy that Evan is taking good care of himself, and then she wipes away a stain on Evan's neck. Evan's unusual behavior alerts wife. She expresses her concern and requests Evan to be with them always, shedding tears. Evan throws her into his arms and ensures her that he will stay with them. Some time later, Evan watches television news at home. It reports that three corpses are found in a deserted yard. Evan's eyes are getting cold and blank while looking at the television. Mom gazes at him and seems to read his mind. The three victims are soon identified to be the abusing fathers of Evan's clients. Needless to say, the three students come to Evan for counseling. They do not expect the death of their fathers. 
Perhaps they should celebrate that domestic violence is put to an end. To Evan's surprise, they are stricken with grief. It is never their wish to have the father died. What they want is only their change to the good. Chris cries before Evan, saying that even though his late father is bad, he is irreplaceable. Now he has no more chance to see him turning into a good father. Evan gives him another perspective, reasoning that the father's death is probably a good thing for his family. He points out that recently Chris' father behaves well, because Chris's mother just received a great inheritance. Shocked, Chris asks Evan how he learns about the inheritance, for he does not remember telling Evan anything. Evan says he hears it from Chris, but Chris's memory is failing him. Chris remains in confusion, and he does not buy Evan's words. Soon after, the detective in charge of the murder drops by Evan's house. It is because the three victims' children are Evan's clients. Evan defends that there are 5,000 students in the school, and he is in touch with almost all troubled teens. Most of their family members have problems with drugs, theft, and violence. They are generally dangerous and vulnerable to crimes. Detective questions wife as she discovers her husband often venturing out at night. When wife is gathering her words, mom steps in to answer that such a thing never happens. She testifies her son is a good husband and a good father. Detective demands wife to take the question. Wife first hesitates, then replies to him that she has never found her husband missing at night. Detective does not let go easily. He presses on to know if wife sleeps soundly at night. While wife remains silent, mom peeks at a statue. In a pinch, baby cries, and wife excuses herself from the conversation. Detective also leads with a mystic smile. The next day, detective visits wife during Evan's working hours. He begins with a more specific question demanding to know where Evan was when Baby was sent to the hospital that night. After some consideration, wife answers that Evan was with her when she went to the hospital, and then detective shows her a photo, proving that Evan's car was at some other place that night. Wife becomes nervous, but soon she calms down. In return, she asks detective if he has any children. Learning that detective has no child, wife elaborates with emotions that it is hard to empathize with a parent unless he becomes one. She explains that it is not easy to handle love and anxiety. Her husband interacts with troubled teens during the day and takes care of the family at night. Since his life is filled with crisis, he needs some personal space. That is why at night, he would drive away from the house to take some fresh air. She adds that she trusts him, and he takes a rather trip every night. At last, detective presents his name card, telling wife to call him whenever she wants to provide any useful information. He believes that it is just a matter of time. On another day, Evan is brought to the living room by the TV news. This time around, the victim is nurse, found dead on a hospital cart. Evan immediately looks at mom, and she also turns to him. Merely by exchanging glances, they seem to know what is happening. But Evan does not give any comments. He simply instructs mom to turn off the TV. At late night, Evan and wife awake to a loud banging on their door. Evan proceeds to answer the door and finds Chris dashing in. Chris claims that Evan has murdered his late father. That is why Evan knows about the inheritance without Chris leaking any information. Chris reasons that Evan must have met his father. He then points his gun at Evan, threatening him to tell the truth. Evan tries to calm him down with words of comfort, saying that he regards Chris as his own son, and he only wants to give him a good life. While talking, he approaches Chris and grabs his gun. And then he back hugs Chris, telling him that it will be okay. Right after that, he points the gun at Chris' head for a trial and puts it down. Wife witnesses what is going on. Combining with the newspaper article on the murder case, she pieces up everything. It sends a shiver down her spine, and she does not know what to do with this stark reality. At breakfast time, mom tells wife that baby and the family need to be protected. Now, wife needs to rise and safeguard her family. Mom adds that even though sometimes it takes a heavy price, it is worth doing so. Offering a cup of coffee, mom continues to press wife, saying that wife has not experienced such troubles, but it is not an easy thing. In fear, wife answers her with a trembling voice, saying that she will do whatever it takes for the family. Mom is pleased upon hearing her promise. And then, wife gives Evan a call, requesting to come back early to take care of baby. Following that, she calls Chris to initiate a meet. Having made an appointment, she sets off in the car. By the time Evan reaches home, wife is long gone. 
Mom asks Evan if he trusts wife. It takes Evan a while to confirm that wife will protect the family. To ensure nothing goes wrong, he tails after her. At a desolate factory, wife returns Chris' gun to him. She defends her husband and persuades Chris that Evan killed the abusing father is the sake of Chris. Just when Chris is about to grab the gun, wife gives him an unexpected shot. She then puts the gun in Chris' hand and sends a social media status using Chris' mobile phone. Evan watches the whole process and grins. Soon the TV news covers that Chris committed suicide after killing his own father. It lists the status wife sent as important evidence to support such a claim. Detective again visits their house, announcing that there is nothing more to investigate in this murder case. It is clear that Chris has committed suicide with his own weapon. Before he departs, he gazes at mom, Evan, and wife. He nods his head. The film ends with Evan and wife watching baby in contentment. At the back of them, mom is silent, gazing at the couple. One can tell from flashbacks that the three victims are indeed killed by Evan. He murders them during his midnight trips. Chris' late father is one of them. Nurse is slashed dead by mom. When Evan was eight years old, he killed his own father in order to stop him from abusing mom. Mom buried the dead and cleaned the scene. As such, the three adults of the family are all murderers. It's revealed that Evan suffered from domestic violence when he was young. His dad once beat him down. Evan's resentment grew until one day he killed his dad. Mom helped to cover up his crime, kneeling down before Evan. Mom said to Evan that he did nothing wrong. Mom loved him and would protect him no matter what. Growing up, Evan becomes a social worker at school and builds a family through wife. Wife's anxiety with breastfeeding, the poor relationship between wife and mom, and all kinds of issues from clients have put Evan to the test. From time to time, he is vividly reminded of the scene when he killed his late dad. He feels hopeless and useless before his clients and baby. That's why he decides to solve all the problems with violence. This explains why he captures the three victims and forces them to share their feelings at the time of violence before he kills them. Evan thinks that their death would make the students happy. Little does he expect to cause them more troubles and pains. They have lost their loved ones, and there is no more hope for them to return. Chris becomes suspicious of Evan due to his unusual behaviors. Chris threatens to kill Evan. Instigated by mom, wife guns down Chris in the name of giving baby a complete family. She also fabricates a suicide scene for Chris and successfully digresses the investigation. Nurse is slain by mom, for she is rude to her at the hospital. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.